This screencast will show you how to create a Java ME game using the NetBeans Mobile Game Builder. This demonstration is based on Lukash Hashik's hands-on lab that was given at Java 1. The first step in creating any game is the concept. In this game, Duke is trying to find his way back to his father, James Gosling. The game is called Lost Duke. The screencast focuses on how to use the game designer to create the visual components of a game, such as sprites and tiled layers. NetBeans includes a game designer to help you create the visual components of your game. There are many books available to help you with writing game logic in Java. We start by opening a prepared project. The zip of this project is available for download on the web page of this screencast. When we open the project's gamemidlet.java file, we can examine the project's components, such as the start point, splash screen, and menu items. The first thing we need to do to create the game is add a new component to the design palette, the maze canvas. And the maze canvas is our only choice, so we add Click Finish, and verify that the new component appears in the Custom Components palette. Now we need to edit source code in the maze canvas. We can do this by editing the component properties. The change we make here allows the canvas component to be correctly initialized. Lukas uses some code from a text file he prepared. The code we are adding starts the game thread and ensures that the visual midlet works correctly with the canvas. We can use the contextual menu to add the game builder to a midlet. The game builder provides a graphical user interface that supports the mobile game API detailed in JSR 178. Lukash names it Maze Game Design. It starts as an empty game design with tiled layers, sprites, and scenes ready to be added. First, we will create an animated sprite called James. It uses existing images from our project sources. In the new sprite panel, you can import images for the sprite and resize their height and width. We click OK to create the sprite, but this sprite isn't ready for the game just yet. Animated sprites use multiple images to create the appearance of movement. We can drag and drop the images to change the order of appearance to produce the desired animation effect. You can press play to preview how the animation appears. You can also change the pause between the frames to increase or decrease the speed of the sprite animation. We will create one more sprite called Duke. To do this, we import the images and adjust the image size for the animation.
For this sprite, we need different animation sequences to allow the sprite to navigate the maze. We can use the contextual menu to create sequence. We name the first one Duke Falling. We'll create another one called Duke Jumping. So we drag and drop images to create the animation we need for each sequence. The first Duke sequence has more frames than we need. So again, we use a contextual menu to remove the unneeded frame. Dragging an image to a sequence will create a new frame if one is needed. And just like that, we're done creating our sprites. To create a new tiled layer, just click on the icon. The first tiled layer will be called Maze 1. Pick the PNG for the wall and change the size of the image grid. After selecting the image, you can copy it onto the tiled layer by moving the mouse over the desired squares of the grid. Here Lukas creates a simple maze for the first level of the game. When finished, we can right-click and select Trim to Size to remove the unneeded grid areas. Now we put it all together. To create a scene, we combine the sprites with the tiled layer. So in the Game Design tab, we create a new scene, name the scene Level 1, and use the right-click menu on the canvas to add tiled layer Maze 1. You can change the position in the editor with the mouse or by changing the XY coordinates. After adding the tiled layer, Add the sprites for Duke and James to the scene and place them where you want them to be in the maze when the scene begins. Now the scene is complete. In this game, we are using the game logic sample from Carol Hamer's book, Creating Java ME Games. In the Maze Manager class, Lukash adds some code here he has prepared in a text file. He also corrects some errors by fixing imports. And after pasting it, he right-clicks and reformats the code to tidy things up. Now the fun part, we get to play the game. So we run the project, and the game launches in the emulator. Notice the Lost Duke splash screen in the emulator. And there's Duke. He's in the maze. Lukash is playing the game. Duke has found James Gosling. So he's completed this level. 
and then Lukash can add his name and post his high score. So to summarize, this was a quick demonstration of how to use the Game Builder to create the visual components of a simple Java ME game. With some imagination and effort, you can create much more complex games and deploy them to your phone using NetBeans IDE.